Yay, we're recording. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Um, welcome to the Tuesday Leadership Zoom. I am, don't know about you guys, but well, first of all, I'm just going to excuse myself right now if my voice is all over the place because literally like the Sunday, I had like zero voice. <laughs> it's just starting to come back. I did so much screaming at conference because of all the people that we had on stage. That was pretty exciting. So if you guys were there, oh my gosh, give us an aha moment in the chat today. Um, but what what a crazy time it is. And so many of you grabbed bonuses in the last four months and it's we just got new products announced. And I mean, dude, it doesn't get any better than being with Lavelle right now at this time. It just doesn't. So y'all know I've been doing this call every Tuesday now for over two years, like three years, like almost three years, interviewed so many different 200Ks. And it's just so exciting because if you guys were at conference or you watched it online, if you all saw all of those 200Ks and all of those millionaires, I still got a lot of people to interview. Um, but it is just so insane how many people are at the top of this company. Like it's insanity. Like craziness all right like i came from another company that had less than 100 people at the top of their comp plan and like you know those millionaire boards there was like every year there was like i don't know 30 faces on it <laughs> oh, there was probably 30 in our entire company and the company was 20 years old um and my last company so you guys have to understand how extremely what extremely huge the opportunity you guys have here is and anyone can get to the top of this comp plan doesn't matter who you are what your background is where you come from your story none of that matters like you can come over to Lavelle and you can change your life you can do whatever you want you can be whoever you want to be and that is just the coolest thing ever I had like goosebumps at conference looking at that picture of um just how many people there were and we didn't even have everybody there like if you guys has been two years ago to the Lavelle conference I think there was like 20,000 people and this year there was maybe four or five thousand so you know it, can you imagine if we would have had every single person there how many how many more 200ks would have been up there holding their banners it's just insane um but this week I'm super excited because I had the opportunity to spend um a weekend with this amazing lady at Maria's retreat a few weeks ago. And I was like, I got to get this, this woman on a call. She is amazing. And I am so happy. She said yes. And Chelsea, I did. Am I saying your last night, right? Your last name, right? McCle McClemon. You got to say it real Texan girl. McClemon. 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 <laughs> McClamid. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it. Um, I'm the worst name botcher ever. I swear to God, I'm always like apologizing. I'm like, how do you say your name? I'm so sorry. Um, I am so excited to interview you today. And I would love to just start with because we do have so many 200 Ks. People don't know everybody. Like my last company, you knew who the 50 people were. But in Lavelle, there's like, so many and that's why i started this call on tuesdays because i want people to hear people's stories and their journeys and not just the good times but the bad times and the and the hard times because there's people on here right now that you know there's some people bummed out right now they they tried for four months and didn't hit one of those bonuses and now they feel defeated or you know they're they're they had somebody quit in their team and they feel like they've got to start over or they're not getting support from an upline i mean there's just 50,000 things, you know it, you're 200K, you get it in your inbox. And we, you know, we, we see that everybody has these struggles, but they don't think that 200Ks go through those struggles. And I'm like, we, it gets worse because <laughs> the bigger your team gets, the more struggles that happen and you have to push through those things. So I think that's why this calls become so popular every week because people love to, you know, they, they love to hear about the crap that happens in your business. <laughs> they want to know they're not alone. Um, but I would love for everybody to hear your complete story. Like what, we'll start with kind of like, what were you doing before you ever got into any kind of home-based business? And then were you in any other businesses that were home-based before Lavelle? Um, just out of curiosity, I always like to ask that so people can see if you already had a network or if you kind of knew what you were doing before coming into Lavelle. And then how did you find Lavelle? And we'll go from there. 
Okay, perfect. Well, no, actually, so you were talking to me at the very first of this talking about this can be an opportunity for anybody and everybody um somebody that has never done a business like this somebody that doesn't know what the heck they're doing if that was me um so i had never been a part of a home-based business before um i tell everybody i'm spoiled rotten because lavelle was <laughs> my first and only um, um home-based business and so i'm i'm super lucky blessed all the things um for this to be my first one um and I didn't have to be you know have bad I guess experiences with another company but no I did not I did not come on board with the network um I came on board wanting to get my products for free because I was a stay-at-home mama and so I thought Luke would kill me if I was spending you know $150 on myself every month when we only had one income coming in and so um I'll kind of go into um what brought me into Thrive um so I started in 2014. So the company was brand new baby. Um, a lot of people didn't know about it yet. Um, but so I had a two-year-old little boy and about, or a six-month-old little boy um, in December of 2013 and went to a hairdresser that I'd gone to in town for a while. And she had these little sample packs sitting out on her counter um, at her shop. And I sat there staring at those sample packs the entire time I got my hair done. And um, so finally, at the end of, of, you know, her finishing up with my hair, I said, hey, what's that? And she said, oh, that's that Thrive stuff. Have you heard of it, girl? And I said, no, you know, I haven't heard of it. I don't get out much. Stay at home, mom. I don't see anybody all day. Um, and so she said, oh, yeah, it's, a, it's like a multivitamin. She's like, it gives me energy, you know, and she started saying a couple of things. And I thought, oh, cool. And she goes, yeah, I'm selling the, um, a three-day experience for, I don't think she called it experience. She said, I'm selling three days for $20 if you want to try it. And I said, okay, sure. I said, well, and I, you know, I get the pack. I give her the money. And I'm like, what do I, you know, what do I do? How do I do it? And um, she said, oh, when you wake up in the morning, you take all three steps at once. She said, you take those two pills and that shake and you put the, the sticker on. And I was like, okay, I can do that. Mind you, everybody on this Zoom, I understand fully that there were directions on the packet, but I... I'm good at following directions I'm told, right? So I did exactly what my hairdresser told me to do. Mind you, I was not even taking a multivitamin. I was not taking care of my body at all. I was living on the pots of coffee, the Sonic happy hours, <laughs> the Cheetos on the couch, all the things. I was not taking care of my body. And so when I woke up the next morning and I didn't take it correctly and I did all three steps at the same time, um, I, let's just say I did not love my very first Thrive experience. And um, when I very first started sharing my story with, with people, I would leave that part out. And I wanted to you know, paint this picture that I felt it on day one and it was all magic unicorns and rainbows and all that. And then I realized that that wasn't the case for everyone else. There were other people that were sampling that even when they took it correctly, they maybe didn't fill it on day one, or they maybe it was just too much for them on day one or things like that. And so I really had to kind of put myself in check and, and start telling that part of my story again that, hey, guess what? I didn't love it the first time I tried it either. Um, so I'll tell you guys, I, I put away my, my other two days. I just, I didn't get on social media and say, I don't like Thrive. I just said, you know, okay, maybe this isn't for me. I tucked it away in my drawer. Didn't really think about it again. Um, and then fast forward to um, the end of January. So about a month later, month and a half later, um, two of my very good friends, Kelly Jobindi, Letitia Regal, came over to my house. And um, Letitia has been my photographer through life. She took um, from our wedding pictures through all our babies. Um, Kelly Joe's just a good life friend. And they had both started thriving. And little did I know <laughs> that this was all the same people, but um, they came over. I just wanted to have some friends over. They had never said a word to me about thriving. But when they came through my door that night, um, I noticed something different about them. And of course I was picking dinner. So they were over there at my kitchen table, just squealing and, and eking and all these things because Letitia was, was working on get one more, get one more girl, get one more auto ship customer. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? Well, she was in her bonus period and she was hitting her bonuses with Lavelle, Letitia was. 
And I'm like, what are y'all doing? You know, and they said, oh, it's that Thrive stuff. Have you heard of it? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I have. You know, that uh, I didn't know y'all were doing that. And I'm sitting there thinking, awesome. And I invited these people over to my house. Great. So, um, you know, they're, they're telling me about how good they're feeling. They're telling me about these bonuses Letitia's earning. I mean, she's earning over $1,000 in cash. And I'm sitting there thinking, what in the world? I mean, I, I just didn't love it. And so, of course, they start asking me questions. They figure out I probably should have, like, slowed my role on my Thrive experience and done it correctly. Um, and so, basically, after chatting my ear off for a couple of hours that night, um, I agreed to sample again for the second time if I did it correctly the way that Letitia told me to. Um, so, I did. And I'm thankful every single day that I did give Thrive a second try. And so I really try to push that to anyone and everyone that, um, and maybe you've had somebody that, that is not sampled or didn't love it right away or didn't even love their first month, but give it a sec, get them to get it a second try. Um, because I'm so thankful that I did. Um, I did love my sample the second time. I called Letitia the next day and I said, I feel amazing. Where do I get this for the rest of my life? And she said, um, okay, she said, all you do is create your free account, free customer account, or a free brand promoter account on my website. And I said, oh, no, no, no. Once again, huge skeptic. I said, I just want to be a customer. I just want this. I just want to get it, you know, start taking it, see what it does for me more than one day. And um, she said, okay, that's great. I said, but how do I go about that? And she said, well, even as a customer, you can refer, your, you can refer to, get yours for free. I said, tell me how to do that. She started just getting my wheels turning and saying, well, who do you know that has headaches all the time? Who do you know that's a tired mama like you that just had a baby? Who do you know that is getting ready for a wedding? Who do you know that their knees or their arms bother them? My husband team ropes. So we have, and my dad cowboys whole life. So we have a lot of people with aches and discomforts in their bodies. Um, so she just started naming off all these things that Thrive helps with. And I said, girl, it sounds like everybody I know needs these products. And she said, perfect. You only need two. And I'm like, okay. And she said, but you know, if everybody, you know, needs these, you need to click the brand promoter button for free and promote. She was like, you could do really well with this. And I said, no, I couldn't. I'm a stay at home mom. I know no one. I don't have a network. I don't, I don't hardly even talk to any friends from high school. I don't hardly talk to any friends from college. I don't know anybody. I don't see anybody all day long. You know, I started giving her all the excuses on why I should not do this, this promoter thing. And I said, on top of that, Letitia, I said, I've had friends that have joined things like this. And I said, it breaks my heart and it makes me sick for them because they end up spending more money than they're making. They're, they're wanting that side hustle. They're wanting to provide, you know, a little extra income for their family, but they are you know, having all these crazily, they have to buy all this product to begin with, and they have to keep so much in stock. And then they have to have this like monthly fee or a fee just to have a website or, you know, all these crazy things. I'm like, or they can't get off auto ship. I, I had been a customer of, of a friend's and I got stuck on an auto ship one time. And I'm like, it was sucking stuff out of my account and I couldn't get it to stop. I don't want that. I don't want any part of that. And she said, Chelsea, I promise you, this is not like that. And honestly, it came down to me trusting her. I trusted her that, that this company wasn't going to be like that and wasn't going to suck the life out of me. Um, and, and I thought, you know, it just made sense to click the promoter button because I was going to at least tell two people about it to get my product free, right? So I knew that I wanted to get my product free. And I thought, heck, I don't know, that's, you know, maybe, I don't know, $15, $20 a month extra. That's, you know, a box of diapers or some formula or a tank of gas that Luke doesn't have to pay for. And he'll be so proud, right? So guys, that's honestly why I started. I trusted Letitia that this wasn't going to be terrible. And I was thinking I might make an extra $20, maybe $30 a month with this company. Um, and that's how I got started. It's so crazy how many people they just got started to get their product free and make a little extra cash. And now on your back wall is a millionaire picture. Like <laughs> you're probably like, what the heck happened? Uh, so I kind of want to take everybody through your journey as far as did you get grab your VIP bonuses? Um, how long did it take for you to go 4K? And then kind of the time frame in between each one of your ranks. Did you get stuck anywhere? Um, you know, so people can kind of get that vision of 
what 200K getting there look like for you? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um, so yes, I, I love the VIP bonuses so, so, so much because, um, if, and I, I this is so funny. I remember, um, it wasn't until probably a year or two ago, guys, and I've been doing this for seven years since, like I said, since 2014, but it wasn't, but a year or two ago that Kelly Joe told me that, you know, we were scrambling to hit VIP 800 excuse me, scrambling to hit VIP 1600. And she said, because Kelly Jo and Letitia were both helping me. So Letitia is my direct upline, Kelly Jo's um, um, hers. And so she said, I remember Letitia looking at me and saying, if, if she doesn't hit this, I think she's going to stop. If she doesn't hit this VIP 1600, I think she's going to stop. Which is just so funny to me. I, col- I told Kelly Jo, I said, well, she didn't know me at all because that would have just motivated me more. But yes, um, I hit VIP 800, hit VIP 1600. And so when I started, it was February 2014. So I was hitting those bonuses. And, and really, it was just, I love the bonuses because it, it puts a little goal because if you're like me, I don't know what I'm doing with this company. I don't know how to sell a product. I don't know even where to start. Well, those bonuses give you some goals, some tiny goals to achieve. And once you guys, I'm telling you, once somebody achieves VIP 800 and 1600, it is the coolest feeling in the world. For somebody that has never done a business like this and you are able to achieve, you know, $400 or over $1,000 in 14 days, holy moly that's life changing money for a lot of people that that have zero confidence in this industry that is the coolest feeling ever and so I think I think those are genius by the way but um those little goals I'm just I'm I'm very much a, a goal getter I need goals I need to see clearly you know just like the trips I love those because it's constantly giving you goals something to work towards um so I was able to hit 4K my first month in February. Well, that just blew, you know, of course, Letitia and Kelly Joe's mind and mine, of course. Um, mind you, let me let me go back one second to when I was signing up. Um, Luke, my husband, thought it was the dumbest thing ever and said, why are you doing this? What are you doing? Do not do it. You're, you know, you're going to waste money. You're going to, you know, all the negative things. So there was that. So now I'm hitting these bonuses and I get paid on that next Tuesday. And he's like, okay, that's great, but whatever, you know? And so I keep going, hit 4k my first month. Um, well, Letitia and Kelly Joe looked at me and they said, Hey, we're trying to earn this trip for Cabo in May. And if you can get to 12k in March and April, you get to go on a free vacation to Cabo. And I said, what, (laughs) what the only beach I had ever been to was Hawaii one time on my honeymoon because my in-laws paid for it. I had never um, been on a beach trip. I'd never been to Mexico, didn't even have a passport like y'all. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. How do I do that? And they said, okay, well, you know how we got you to 4k this month, go get three people to do the same thing that you just did. Okay. So I did it. So, um, you know, and Kelly Hyman was there too. She saw me on my last night of right before I hit 12K. Literally, my fingers were probably bleeding. I was crying. I ended up running a fever. I had worked so hard till the last minute of the end of the month and hit that trip. So hit 12K in March and, and earned my trip to Cabo in May. And you guys, I laugh at this still to this day because like, like Lisa said, this is on, on the wall behind me is crazy because when I earned that trip to Cabo, I literally thought I had like won the world. So I'm so excited. And Luke comes in, I'm like, we're going to Cabo. And he's like rolling his eyes. So I get all this, you know, the things sorted out. I get the flights book. I get our passport stuff figured out. I get all of it done. And you guys, we're sitting on a plane. Mind you, my husband has never taken the products yet. Okay. Not supportive, not even thriving, not taking the products. We are sitting on a plane at DFW fixing to take off to go to Cabo. Luke looks at me and says, um, I hope you kissed your babies goodbye. And I said, what? And he goes, yeah, this is not real. They're about to drop us off in the middle of nowhere in Mexico, Chelsea. And we're never going to see our kids again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. This is real. Like, you don't understand. I have heard these stories and I am, I have these bonuses. Like, this is real. This company is real. What are you talking about? So 
So I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I've had to hear along the way, you guys, from the very, very beginning. And it's never stopped. There's been lots of hills and valleys, but it's never stopped. Like Lisa said, just because we are a 200K rig does not mean that we don't hear all the things, even from our own husband, right? Um, so that was um, that was in May. We our, my team was um, able to hit 40k that month. I remember in Cabo, Paul Gravett coming over and sitting at the table with me and Luke, and he's like, "Hey, what are you you know what are you running for this month?" And I said, "40k," you know, and I, I was just I was just starstruck. And he's like, "Okay, we'll do it." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." There's another challenge. So they hit um, 40k in May. Um, I remember in, all, I think it was August, the 1st of August, um, was the very first Thrive Flues. It was not even called Thrive Flues then. It was just conference. It was the very first one. And I was going for ADK, but sitting in that room, seeing and hearing the vision that Jason and Paul gave us and said, get to 200K as fast as you can. They put such a sense of urgency on it. And I knew that I had to do it. Um, I said, okay, I will, I will be 200K. My team um, finished 80K in August and we were a 200K team in September of 2014. So seven months um, that this stay-at-home mama that literally didn't know anyone, think I had a network at all, um, our team was able to do that. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you guys, something that stuck with me at the very beginning was when I was giving all the excuses and all the doubts and I don't know anybody, I don't know anybody, you know, Kelly just said, it's not about who you know, it's about who they know. You know, you're just reaching out to a friend to help them feel better, but you don't know who they know. You don't know how many people they're going to bring into this business, right? So that's kind of um, a little bit about my, my 200K journey, Lisa. When, when did your husband become a believer? <laughs> okay, well, when, so, when did the light bulb go up? Well, um, he got his honey. We, we did land in Mexico. It was at the most amazing resort ever. We did not get dropped off and left. We did not, not ever see our children again. Um, but that very first night on the beach, um, of course, you guys know the fun, fun party on the beach, right? The first night. Um, he heard Jason and Paul speak. And I mean, I guess it had to come from the mouth of men instead of his wife for him to believe it and get it. But he saw the vision. He saw um, how exciting this movement was that night on the beach, um, hearing from Jason and Paul. And so I remember walking back to the hotel room that night and he said, hey, um, you got any of that men stuff with you and I said nope you're gonna have to wait till we get home <laughs> and so Luke has been thriving every single day since Thanks we got home how much percentage you have 2014 <laughs> you know what's so crazy is that it's third party credibility right like they have to hear it from somebody else even our own husbands or moms or sisters or the people that we think in our lives, you know, why aren't you trusting us? Like we're family, but people that, you know, like they're the worst, they need to hear it from somebody else. And it's so important to get people to events. Like if y'all are on here and you've got a negative spouse or somebody not supporting you, the best thing you could ever do is drag them to conference or, you know, some kind of a thrive event, or even if it's like, you know, getting, get earning one of these trips and taking them, like, I promise you after that, they'll be in. Like, I don't know one spouse that hasn't changed their mind once they get to something and they catch that vision too, and they get that third party credibility. So since you've been, how long, well, just how long did it take you to, when did you earn Millionaire's Club? What year? Um, so I'll tell you, um, <clears throat> I'll tell you, talk about um, um, things that, things in our business that could set us back, Right. So um, I worked it, busted it for, for three years, was so, so stinking excited because I was going to get to speak on stage with my best friend. We were going to get to duo it up on stage in 2017 at Thrive Palooza. And I was so excited, you guys, like literally it was the highlight of, of my Thrive life so far. Um, and I literally, my husband drove me to the hospital that morning in Dallas. I kept saying, I just get me to Dallas because I've got to get all these tickets and I've got to get, and then I'll lay down in the hotel room. Okay. And then just, just get me to Dallas, just get me to Dallas. And he said, well, we're going to stop by the ER first. And if they tell you, you can go to Dallas then we will. And so we uh, took a pit stop at the ER that morning on the way to conference in 2017. And um, I had, 
um, meningitis. <laughs> And they put me in the hospital right then, did a spinal tap. I had meningitis and was literally crushed. Um, I didn't get, um, you know, to speak on stage. I didn't get all the things. And I could have let, I could have gotten stuck in that moment very, very easily. But, you know, I thought, okay, that wasn't for me. That wasn't meant for me. God has something bigger. God has something better. And so I left, once I finally got out of the hospital um, with meningitis and could think clearly again, because that took a minute, um, I just had a new goal for myself and a new goal for this team. And I said, okay, I will be on that stage next year, but it will be for a different reason. And um, in 2018, the fall of 2018, our team hit the Millionaire Award. Um, so the very next year, because I, I was not going to let that be the end of my story. And I'll tell you guys, there's been lots of highs, you know, hills and valleys throughout this journey. And, and that's okay, because I feel like I, I do appreciate the valley, the valleys too, because I'd like to learn from them. So valleys are okay. I want you guys to know valleys are okay. You just can't get stuck in them. Okay. You just can't get stuck there. Um, because those valleys are what makes the hills that much sweeter, right? So, um, so 2018, Lisa, is when, when I got the millionaire. You know, there's, I, I'm thinking about all, you know, we have 360 people on today. And I'm thinking about a lot of these people, you know, they came into January, some are new, but there's a lot that came into January and they were like, these bonuses were announced and they got all excited and then now bonuses have ended and a lot of people are on here and they feel defeated because they didn't earn one. And, you know, I always tell people you can't just work. You know, there were a lot of people hibernating and then those bonuses were released and they were like, oh, I woke up. OK, I'm going to go after this. And then now that they didn't earn one, they go back to hibernating. And here's the thing is you're never going to earn a bonus because there will be more. Okay, I don't know if y'all, I've been with Lavelle for four years. You've been with them for like, you know, you're you're like a, you're a pioneer. So you've been like here since the beginning <laughs> and you know as well as I do, they're always coming out with new things. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, it's never gonna be your time if you don't get consistent. If you're only gonna be a fair weather promoter, like I'm only gonna get excited when something like bonuses are announced, then you are always gonna be in this circle where you're chasing your tail. And, you know, there's people on here that they're in different seasons in their business, right? You know, there's people that are like, I've been doing this for three years and I still don't feel like I'm where I want to be. Or we all have a different story, a different journey. But when you look back at, you know, 200K and I mean, you've been in 200K for a while. There's you talked kind of a little bit about ups and downs. Are there anything that stick out to you that you've kind of had to go through? You know, like I'm. <laughs> I, I know last year I lost a, a 200K leg and I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? What's going on? Like you get in your own head about things. And, <clears throat> and but then I realized, wait a second, hold on. I need to work with the people that are here. And now it's like, I, I, it sounds horrible, but I'm like, I don't even know what they're doing. But all I know is my team is triple the size. <laughs> so, because I didn't get <laughs> focused on that. What are some things that stick out to you that you kind of had to push through or overcome? Well, and I think it's hard, it's, it's hard as a leader not to get stuck on that, especially when some of these people are your close friends or they're near and dear to your heart. Because, I mean, if you've gotten anybody to 200K or heck, even 80K or 40K, you are connected with that person. You have spent a lot of time with that person. You have helped them grow their business. You have ran promos. You have done calls. You have done all the things that you could possibly, all the energy that you could possibly give into that team, into that person. And it's, it's, it's hard not to feel it, <laughs> to feel it to your absolute core when someone um, walks away from this, because um, I mean, I have, I have one that one person in mind that I can think of, um, she was an 80K on my team and she's, I, I actually, it's someone I looked up to my whole life. She was a great friend. Um, and I, and I look at people on stage, here's the thing. And I look at my other legs and other teams and people on stage and I think, you could, you know, this person, I'm like, you could have been, you could have already been a millionaire. You could have been, you know, all the things that they could have been. I could go into all the things they could have been all day long, but I saw that they didn't see that. I can't help 
that they didn't want it. Okay. I can't help. I could literally could not have done anything else besides maybe give them some blood or some organs. That's the only other thing that I could have done to help this person um, want it. And, and they don't, and I just have to be okay with that. I have to find peace with that because I have to realize that just because they don't, they, it's not their thing anymore. There is still someone else out there that it is their thing. Um, or they, it will be their thing when I introduce this to them. Um, so there are still tons and tons and tons and people out there searching for what we have guys. So just, and yes, I mean, I've had an 80, I've lost an 80 K I've lost two 40 K's I've lost over a dozen 12 K's. Um, I lost a 12 K to another leader in Lavelle that stood on stage with me getting their millionaire award at the same time. Um, and, and this 12 K just thought that they were going to do better underneath this other person. And I finally had to just cut ties and say, you know what? I wish you the best. And bless her heart. She never even hit 4k again. So I hate that for her. And, and I wish people would realize the grass is not always greener on the other side, but we can't, we can't make people realize that. Right. Um, they, sometimes they have to see it for themselves and sometimes they have to, to fail to, to open their eyes to that. We can't do it for them. And, you know, I've lost some teams by, I feel like maybe pushing them too hard you know that's that's one thing as a leader that you have to kind of find a balance but it's really hard because you're dealing with so many different personalities that what works for you know the way that you lead one team or one leader does not work for another and so it's really 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 hard to find um <laughs> a relationship in and how how you work together how you speak to them as a leader but I'll tell you I, I lost one big team from I feel like pushing and encouraging them them too much and for the longest time you guys I beat myself up about it I really have because I'm like Chelsea you were you were too hard on them you pushed them too hard and they basically all said peace out but you know what um like I said you learned from those hills and those valleys and in that valley right there I just have to say I was coming from my heart I was showing them love I was pushing them and if you know, by gosh, if, if, if loving on someone and encouraging them and pushing them to be the best that they can be with this company makes someone quit, they were looking for a reason anyway. Okay. I mean, that's just kind of how I've had the mindset shift that I've had to make is they were looking for a reason anyway, because if someone's pushing you and motivating you to be better to, to, to do better for your life and to dream bigger and to have bigger goals and to help you accomplish those goals. If someone's pouring into you and trying to do that for you to help your family and help your life and you get offended by that and say, peace out, you are looking for a reason to peace out anyway. That's the only, that's the only way that I can see that. <laughs> um, I don't know how else to see that, um, Lisa. I mean, you tell me, girl. No, it's, you're right. Like there's some people like they're looking for a reason, <laughs> you know what I mean? There, there's nothing you could do or say. And as a leader, I think we take it so personal. Like if somebody leaves or if somebody, you know, has an issue, we think we put it on us. And at the end of the day, every person on here is responsible for themselves. I mean, if it's to be, it's up to me, <laughs> not you or or anyone else in the business, it's me. And that's what everybody has to like get through their heads is it doesn't matter whether, you know, your upline isn't helping you or your downline isn't working or you had a bad day here or there. Like it's up to you. Like it's nobody else's fault if you don't succeed in this business. Do you ever feel like you were stuck? Like, wow, oh my gosh, I'm going backwards or I'm not moving right now. Why isn't it growing? Do you ever feel like you've been stuck over the last few years? Oh yeah, girl. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. So um, I'll tell you in a little bit about the upline. You know, my upline is someone that I've done life with for, um, you know, over 10 years now. And so uh, we are in very, very, very different seasons. And we got that way years ago. Um, I am, I am not on my own by any means. I don't want to say that. I mean, she lives like two miles away from me. And if I called her and said, come help me, she would. Um, but, um, my team grew, grew, grew very, very quickly and, uh, put her in a position that was very difficult 
for her to grow. Um, and so it, it, it made her get stuck in a rut where she was. And for the longest time, um, I, I almost felt guilty about it because we are friends and, and, and I want her to, see, I want to see her successful and I want her to succeed. But I felt like there was this huge guilt weighing down on me that we were this 200 K team, but, um, you know, and, and because, and not necessarily my team has never, I feel like my team has never, um, made her feel that way, but she, she, um, had her own, <laughs> I guess, um, issues with it um and and struggled with it that that my team didn't see her as a as a high-ranking leader and and things like that and that's okay so but like you said I I had to I, I kind of had to like I can't I can't carry the weight of everybody else's issues right I mean we all every single person in this business has life happening to them um and so I had to focus on on me and what I could control because I can't control that I could not control what was happening in her other legs I cannot control what my upline does I cannot control who my upline is I cannot control if you, you cannot control if you get along or do not get along with your uplines um that's just it you are the upline okay it doesn't matter. You can find somebody that if you need help with this business, you can find somebody somewhere in this business that will help you. I guarantee you that. So it does not always have to be an upline. Know that. Um, and you can find motivation somewhere in Lavelle. Heck, I mean, there's probably a million people on this Zoom that are not even on your team, Lisa, but they're coming to this Zoom every Tuesday to be lifted up, to get inspired, all these things. So you can connect and Lavelle in different ways and, and motivate yourself and motivate your team in different ways. There's so many different avenues now that we have. Um, so that's one thing that I wanted to kind of touch on is, is uplines. Okay. Your, your upline does not determine your success. They don't period the end. Like they don't. Um, but as far as feeling stuck, yes. Um, I've actually had, I have four kids now. This is my why. Um, th this is the order. <laughs> This is Kitten Carter, Coleman, and Quaid, and they are my why. But I've had two babies since I started, you guys. Talk about holy moly. <laughs> stuck. Um, when you're just at, you know, you're going through the nine months of pregnancy and then you have the newborn and you're you're trying to keep your team going, but you're also trying to get through every single day. Um, yes, there have been times that I felt stuck because I felt like if I wasn't giving a hundred percent every day. When some days I physically could not, that my team wasn't, that if I was not there, and it's the, it is the truth. If you're not being present and you're not giving it 110 and you're not plugging in and you're not plugging your teams in, everybody's going to be like, oh, I'm going to just take a break and sit back and chill a little bit. And, and that can't happen. And that is when you feel like you get, you get stuck and nobody's really doing anything and nobody's bringing in any new growth and all these things because everybody's kind of on vacation mode. Right. And we go through seasons every year and, and things like that. Like I said, hills and valleys, but seasons where life is happening to one of our promoters or heck even a whole team. And so that sets you back and maybe you're not hitting a rank and that sets you back. So absolutely, there have been times that I didn't hit 200K. There have been times that, like I said, I've had big teams completely like remove me from their group and peace out. I mean, I've had, you name it. <laughs> um, I literally didn't even get to go to Rapalooza this past weekend. So, so I, I am like, Ugh! every time y'all are talking about it at the beginning of these Zooms, because I woke up with the worst stomach bug ever on Friday and I just, I could have like ran to the bathroom every five minutes, but I didn't want to get all of you guys sick. Um, so I had to stay home, but I was sharing my team's post. I was, you know, all of that still trying to stay plugged in. And I think that that's huge. You know, I try to share that with my promoters all the time. You know, they want to come to me as a leader and say, you know, hey, I'm not, I'm not doing good. I'm not growing. I'm not, you know, what am I doing? And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Can, can you give me your business card? Well, I don't have any business cards. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, can you um, can you pull up your Facebook so I can go to your your website link on your Facebook? And they're like, well, I don't have a website link on my Facebook. Um, okay, well, just pull up your social media so I can see some of your Thrive posts and see one that I would relate to and 
and how I would, you know, reach out to you about wanting your products. Oh, you don't have any Thrive posts. Oh, you haven't shared any, any Thrive stories or you haven't posted about your products in six or eight months. I can't even, I'm your upline and I know you're thriving. I can see in my back office that you're ordering, but I can't even tell through your social media or any part of your life that you're a thriver. How do you expect to grow? <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's there's lots of, of hills and valleys, like I've said a million times, but um, lots of tough conversations that we have to have with people and tough conversations that we have to have with ourselves in the mirror too, guys. Don't, don't even feel like as 200K leaders, we don't look at ourselves in the mirror and say, you could have done more yesterday or what the heck were you doing last month? You let someone close out, you know, this close from a rank or, you know, and we have those self-talks in the mirror every single day, but we do have to give ourselves grace, but that does not mean we have to give up right? <laughs> give yourself grace. But don't give up. Amen. I mean, like we all, it doesn't matter who you are on this call, you know, your season, you might be looking at other people winning right now and thinking, why am I not winning? I've been there. I have been there where I'm like, what is happening? But I also have to look in the mirror, like you said, Chelsea, and realize, uh, well, I'm pretty much responsible for this. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, you know, I'm going to give a little wee wee leeway with that 0.1%, but it's usually has to do stemming from me, what I'm not putting in, what I'm not doing. And your team does follow your lead. Like it, they really do. They know if you're not working. I mean, putting a couple of posts out here and there does not cut it. You've got to show up. And if you're not showing up, then they think, why do I need to show up? And nobody wants to see you buying a new car you know, buying something new for your house, going on another trip with your family when you don't work. They're thinking, what am I doing? Working for this girl to go lay on a beach somewhere? Like they, your team understands this and you've got to stay in it. You've got to stay in it no matter what, even on the days you don't feel like it. That's where, that's how you get to a millionaire. That's how you get to 200K. What, I, I also wanted to know, I mean, you've been doing this for a while. So I'm going to assume you're kind of like me and your warm network, like your friends and family, they pretty much joined you, <laughs> the ones that were gonna. I mean, you'll get those surprise things out of nowhere. I just had one of those, like a girl that's been on my Facebook for like years, finally joined me at, um, a couple weeks ago. And I was like, what the heck? Oh my gosh, didn't, I forgot all about her. But honestly, now I just have to keep growing my network because I'm out. Like I'm out of those people that I knew before. How do you, what's like some tips you have for people that kind of feel stuck network wise and they're like, okay, I've got to grow my network because I've, I've kind of exhausted who I have and I need to bring new people into this team. What have you done or what do you do to grow your network? Okay. Well, um, it's funny you ask this because uh, that I took away so many golden nuggets from the retreat we were both at um, with Maria because um, I, I, this is something that I've struggled with. It really is. Like you said, we've, we've, we've thought like we've reached out to everybody we can reach out to. And so how do we bring new people in? Um, so technology, Kelly Hanman's on here. She's laughing at me right now because she knows I tell people I'm like the worst with technology. I promise y'all these banners are my team because I'm the worst. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing and I'm terrible with technology. No. Um, so I know that in the beginning, Facebook was our main tool, marketing tool. It was. And um, now that now there are so many, in seven years, there are so many different social media avenues, I, platforms, I guess, um, if you will, available to us to promote our products. And the funniest thing is, is someone's promoting something on every single platform. I mean, scrolling through my Instagram, I'm still trying to get very familiar with Instagram, but scrolling through it, someone's advertising something everywhere. I mean, the Facebook ads, I mean, people are advertising that is, you, you could probably look at the numbers. I'm, I don't have any physical data on this, but I guarantee you there's more people pouring in money to advertising on Facebook and Instagram and things like that than, than the, than the televisions anymore. It's just how our society has shifted um, to be advertised, advertised to, to get information on products. You know, everybody used to see commercials on TV and it's not, 
yeah, they're still there but nobody's paying attention to them because everybody's on their phone right so we have our business running right in front of us and the, the tools right in our hands we just have to figure out um how to use that and so that's something that i'm definitely trying to get better at um i feel like as as leaders or people period we need to constantly be growing and learning um in life in general um and so i'm trying to learn how to do different things um i know maria um, kind of worked with us on social media at our at our retreat and worked with us on re Instagram reels and just different fun things that are catchy, catch your attention, stop the scroll, that's your goal um, with this business and so things like that. So I'm definitely trying platforms, um, you know, and re reaching out to people and interacting with people um, on social media and kind of building that relationship and not cold messaging or spamming people but building little relationships with new people everywhere my goal um is to get a new thriver in each state and so that's i'm kind of like zeroing in on that because i want to spread out the thrive love i don't want it all just right here around me in texas um and so that's a goal of mine but honestly guys getting back out into the community um I'm so I don't know where you guys are tuning in from, and I hope that things are semi back to normal for you. Um, after last year, things are back to normal here, 99.9 percent, .9 and so it just feels so good to get those one-on-one um, -on -one interactions. I've gotten three customers this past week just from meeting them at different places. Um, one at the Dollar Tree, literally, I'm like bending down, rummaging through some stuff because I'm going to have a little retreat at my house um, in a few weeks. And so I'm gathering up all these supplies to create these goodie baskets to love on my promoters at this retreat at my house. And so this lady comes up and she's like, man, may I help you? Because I'm like digging. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just trying to get stuff for my retreat. Treat. She goes, oh, you're having a retreat. And I start talking. We just start having a normal conversation. People are craving for normal conversations with, with people again. And I just start doing that. And we we start talking about Thrive. And I said, oh, yeah. And she said, I've never heard of it. Guys, we live in the same town. I've lived here for seven years. I've been thriving everywhere for seven years, right? We live in the same town. But this girl is new to town. She had never heard of it. She has headaches all the time she's the new customer. I mean, there's still ways, there's still people we think just because on our social media, our, our network that everyone's thriving, that's not the case. Please know that that's not the case. There's still millions and millions and millions of people out there that have never heard of Thrive, never tried it and are looking for something. Um, and so it's just our job to figure out how to get it as, um, speaking of teams, I absolutely got so much. We had a leadership retreat with Maria in Florida in October and then the one the other day. And there's just nothing better. So if you can get people together in, in your living room, um, in an underground basement, if you're having to hide out, just get people together and build that community in, and that relationship and that spark and that fun again. I'll tell you guys, last night, Kelly Hyman got, gave me a little gut check because I'm getting kind of flustered because there's this other company that's happening and a couple of our leaders have left to join it. And I'm just like, what are they thinking? You know, the grass is not greener. What are they doing? And Kelly said, you know what, Chelsea, it's just they're making it look fun and exciting. But that's our job, too. Our job is to make this look fun and exciting and our job is to make this look like the girl gang or, you know, the gang, the Thrive Gang that everybody wants to join. And I went, you know what, you're right. We, I, you know, at the very beginning, it was so fun. We were posting all these fun pictures and we were getting together all the time and having all these locals, living room locals and at these fun places. And we were creating this vision for people that it's so, it, it is so fun to thrive. Thrivers are fun. They're full of energy. They're full of life. And you want to be a part of that. That is our culture. That is what we need to be drawing people to. And so, I mean, I wrote it down. It is my goal to have or go to at least five retreats. Even if I have to have them right in here in my living room, I'm going to get people together this year. And people need to be loved on. People need to be lifted up more than on a Zoom. I love you guys. But this, I, I'm a hugger. I need to hug people. I need to, like, smell some perfumes. I need to 
see people and love on them and lift them up and take some fun pictures and, and let people know that we are still here. We are still thriving. We are fun and you want to be a part of this. And you don't need a giant team to do that. You don't have to be 200K to do that. Like it, you can have a couple people. That's where it starts, you guys. It starts with, you know, two people having a slumber party and then somebody on Facebook has FOMO. I want to, I want to be slumber party in, in, in my forties. Like, I mean, it's all about that. Like, don't wait around. That's the thing is so many people wait around for someone else to do it. Or I, I haven't been invited to a retreat. Okay, dude, like who's thrivers in my area. They might not even be on my team. Let's get together. We, people have got to stop using excuses and be proactive, like do it yourself. And that's what, I'll tell you what, I would say every 200K on my team, and you can probably say the same thing, Chelsea, like they're proactive. They didn't wait around for anyone to do it for them. They went and found the answer themselves. They didn't use as excuses like, well, there was no one there to help me. They went and you know how many YouTube videos there are of how many leaders in this company? Like you could literally have no upline support, no doubt, it didn't matter. Like you could literally be so unplugged and just YouTube could make you a million dollars in Lavelle. Like there's, if you want it, you can go find it. Um, I wanted to ask you, cause I think this is so, so important. Income producing activities. A lot of people, I think they get so caught up in busy work. Like it's great that, you know, we had 360, 70 people on the Zoom today, but then they get off and then they don't do anything. And unfortunately you can watch 5,000 Zooms a day and that is not gonna make you money. What will make you money is taking something you learned or heard on the Zoom and then go apply it to your business. And I think a lot of people get so confused on, you know, I had a girl just last week, she was in my inbox and she's like, Lisa, I am on everything and I plug in and blah, blah, blah. But when I asked her certain questions, she wasn't doing income producing things. She thought she was, but she wasn't. So what are things that you feel like that are income producing that everybody on here, whether they just started or they've been in seven years, like what, what did they need to be doing every day, no matter what? Well, I'll tell you, um, and that's the thing, especially, you know, as 200 K leaders, we, we do have a bigger network now on a team. So it's very easy to dig into that and, and get distracted on, you know, who's trying to reach this rank and who's this. And then you look up and you have no personal growth. And if you, there's no personal growth, you're, you're dying. <laughs> like, even though you're a leader, your, your personal business, your checks are going down there. You're, you're personally dying from the inside out. Um, and so, and, and then the new people, like you say, you can get on all the YouTubes, you can get on all the Zooms, but if you don't actually put that, what you're learning into action, you're, you're, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like you're spending your, you you know, you're, you're absorbing all this knowledge, but you're not putting it out back into your team or giving it to somebody else. Right. So, um, you know, Mario's got the five, four, three, two, one. Um, I will tell people wake up and start your day with something positive first though. Um, if I wake up and I just hit the ground running and I'm trying to get the boys ready for for school and I look up and oh my gosh I need to post something and oh my god you know my day gets away from me it's crazy I I'm scattered the whole entire day so I have to wake up and I'll tell you I'm not a morning person like if you're on here and you're a morning person then I'm super jealous because I am not a morning person and so for me I actually have to set my alarm extra early because I would love to sleep right up until 7 a.m right but it, I need that extra time to wake up get my mind right, <laughs> get my mindset right, whether that is digging into my Bible, whether that is digging into a motivational video or something that I need for that day, okay, get your mind right, um, but you have to be making those, those communications and, and, and ways of making those communications. What I mean by that is whether you are reaching out to someone, whether you are checking up on a sampler, whether you are making a post, like I said earlier, if I can't tell that you are a thrive promoter, if you're watching every YouTube video that you can watch and you are um, looking up all of our, our ingredients and all that, that's great. But if you're not posting that you just got down on the floor and played with your granddaughter, which you haven't been able to do in years, if you're not sharing real stories and sharing real life with people, 
you're not going to grow. Okay. You're, you're just not, you have to be real. You have to be raw. You have to be vulnerable. You have to put your drive experience out there. You have to live your drive experience out loud and draw people into you. Um, whether that's out in the community, if you feel like you don't, you know, that's been another goal of mine is to try to get active in the community and join other things. I know, um, Kelly joined a women's basketball league. I'm like, how about a wine night? Can I join a wine night? I don't want to be in a women's basketball league, but you have to get out there some way, whether it's PTO, wearing your DFT where you can see it. And that mama's chugging the monster um, energy drink or they're living on the coffee, just being connected every single day, some form or fashion, your business will grow. Um, if, if you're not plugging in and what I mean by plugging in is, you know, posting reach outs, um, getting people on the phone, sampling all the things, if you're not plugging in in some way, you know, you're not, you're not going to grow. And so definitely doing something every day, um, that obviously they're called income producers producing activities, but doing something every day, um, getting, starting a new Thrive experience. Let that be your goal. Let that be your goal. Let your goal be, set a goal. That's the very, I talked about this from the very beginning. Goals are so huge. They give us the VIPs at the beginning because you need small goals, right? Set your goals. Even if your goal is, I'm going to get three people, I'm going to hear three new Thrive experiences this week. Let that be your goal. And don't stop until you complete it. You know, you you started by saying, make sure you get up and you pour into yourself in the morning, you know, positive affirmations or gratitude journal or whatever. And it made me think of Rodney on stage this weekend saying, this business is 98% mindset, 2% skill. Like, you do not have to know what's in these products. You don't have to know the ins and outs of every single thing. As long as you know VIP 800 and VIP 1600, right? Two customers, two promoters, repeat. And as long as you are pouring into yourselves and growing yourself, your mind, like the mindset is so huge, you're going to get there. You do not need to know all of the things to succeed. I still don't know all the things. Somebody asked me something the other day about the cloud office and I'm like, I don't know. We have to ask somebody that, <laughs> that knows that because I don't know. That doesn't make me money. Um, and that's kind of the mindset you have to get. But, you know, I am just so grateful that you shared the last hour with us. I saw Maria even left a little, she put a little thing in the chat saying, I didn't know that about your story. And, you know, like you'd think she would know that, but that's why I would do, I do this Zoom every week because we don't know the intricate little teeny things that we might, I mean, there's people on my team and I'm like, what, you've been with me this long and I didn't know that? I just heard something last week and I'm like, we've known each other forever. That's why I love doing this Zoom every week because it's just so cool to be able to hear people's stories and there's so many 200Ks and it's just so cool that every week, we get to hear from them and, you know, know that it's a journey, you know, it, you, you're not exempt from, you know, going through the ups and downs just because you're a millionaire or you've hit 200K. You just have to keep going. And I'm just so blessed that we have such an awesome team and so blessed that you for the last hour are pouring into people that you don't even make money off of. Like you're like, absolutely. And that's what's so awesome about Lavelle and Thrive is People just want to help people. Like, we don't care whose team you're on. We just want to see you succeed. So I am so grateful for you, Chelsea. And I'm so grateful I got to meet you in person. And you're so, you're just a beautiful, awesome, lovely human being. And we're all, all us thrivers are pretty awesome. So I am so grateful for you. Thank you for taking the last hour. And I want to thank every single one of you that joined us today. Thank you guys for getting on every week and growing this Zoom. I remember the first one I did, there was like 50 people. And now sometimes we get to four or 500. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. Um, so if you guys loved it, we have this every single week. It's the same link. It's the same time. And if I've got any 200Ks that listened in today that I haven't interviewed you yet, oh my gosh, I want to interview you. I probably am in your inbox. But you're just not getting it. So let me know, because um, I want to interview you. But Chelsea, thank you so, 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 so much. Thank you for having me, Lisa. You guys, um, Lisa's right. It's all about mindset. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Amen. And y'all, we just got paid. Congratulations. Go enjoy the best payday ever. And we will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye, guys.